Hi there. Um, this week's update is a good one. Um, quite a few things have moved forward, changed, changed for the better. Uh, a number of those things were the key things we were looking for to um, know that we can we can come back and start to approach normal. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty still, um, but a quick glance at the end of last week and it looked like almost everything we need um, to be in place to be able to look to do things normally was there in theory at least whether or not we can actually practically do it because other people are, uh, are still playing catch up perhaps um, but almost almost everything looked like it was there um, of course we've only heard about the changes this this week last week um, so this week next week the week after will be us actually trading through that period and seeing what uh, what the reality is um, we've brought most people out of furlough now uh, or at least we're planning to do so there's a couple of people you know, one job follows another job uh, person a is out of furlough now and as long as it works how we think it's going to work this week person b will be out of furlough next week but that's all in progress um, let's dive into the update so when it comes to finding new property to uh, to invest in estate agents were at, allowed to reopen their offices um, last week. In practice, that means most of them are opening their offices this morning, Monday morning. Um, the announcement came on Wednesday and it took a couple of days for them to get themselves organised. Uh, we've spoken to quite a few estate agents over the last couple of days, um, but most of them are opening their doors Monday uh, the 18th. Um, there are quite a few, significant number, that aren't planning to open or come back to work until the 1st of June. Um, so yeah, that, that's a little bit to uh, um, just note down as well. We have 15 viewings um, to book. They're not 100% confirmed with the agent. That will be happening right now as I speak. Um, 15 viewings will be considerably less than the amount that we'd normally do, but it's a promising start. So far, and this is the important thing, I guess, it seems like listing prices and asking prices are the same as they were pre-lockdown. Um, things are just carrying on as normal, or at least trying to carry on as normal. Um, for me, one of the most important group of, um, of actors in maintaining values, they seem to agree, is the surveyors. Uh, the surveyors started back to work, and the feedback from mortgage brokers so far is that valuations or revaluations after a renovation are coming in as expected at, you know, at pre-lockdown levels uh, at least so um, that's really important to us that, that that sort of level is is carrying on so it seems at this very early stage it's it's business business as usual regarding valuations um, don't take that as a market update though that's a very specific update this point in time on our very specific niche corner of the buy to let market so uh, we'll see what happens in the wider market we're yet to trade through the news but at the moment um, what we do seems to be yeah, viable strong um, looking forward to some 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 good times actually because it all, all, all the numbers point to us being able to uh, do better than we used to do maybe pre-lockdown so yeah good good update there um, even better news, over the weekend we secured two properties, and that's what sort of laid me to um, summarise in, in that fashion. Um, they were both great deals. Uh, one single let, one HMO. Um, I'm honestly not sure if we'd have managed to find that HMO pre-lockdown, um, you know, in that area at that price. So that's, uh, that's good news for us. Um, they'll be allocated this week. There's a queue of 80 plus landlords. Um, there's quite a backlog um, to allocate properties out. Um, we're doing all we can to fulfill investor demand. Obviously we're constrained by the amount of properties we can sell agree, we're trying there. Um, getting back to normal numbers in the queue, 80 is not normal. We wouldn't normally have 80 landlords waiting for a, for a property uh, to, to buy. Um, we think that by the end of the July, getting back to normal, that would be realistic. Agents we've spoken to, they're reporting a lot of interest from investors in the lower end stock. That's the that's exactly the type of stock that we buy, the high yielding, lower, lower end stock. Um, we're going to have to leverage our connections to make sure we get our fair share of those properties, but that's what we're going to do. Um, 
there's a little aside here I've got it written down. Make there's a, there's, there's a, the usual button to register your interest below. You know, go, go on to that. Um, if you haven't done also so already, you'll be about eight, 81, 82. Don't let that put you off. Um, we will work through the, that list. But uh, yeah, there's a if you want to scale up your portfolio, register sooner rather than later. That's all I'd say. Um, when it comes to fixing properties, that's the business of um, you know, getting a property and either renovating it um, or, or maintaining it. I said last week that all builders were asked to go back to work last week. Um, some have and some are still organising to do so. A typical story would be that builders went last week, uh, assessed the job and then went away to try and find materials, um, some with better, more success than others. Um, They've certainly had to find some creative ways to procure materials. Um, we'll know more by the end of this week. We've asked all builder, building teams to provide us with a new end date by the end of this week. So yeah, we'll, we will know by the end of this week. But yeah, just looking through some of the list of what, what lengths they've had to go to to procure materials, it's, yeah, it's quite, uh, quite strange. Um, however, I can't see that that that's going to have that can't last for too much longer a couple of weeks in and the manufacturers will start restocking and um, you know, wholesalers will start having the, the right gear in and uh, i think we'll get back to normal in a, a pretty logical path there so when it comes to renting out the empty properties so that once we've finished the renovation renting out an empty property and also renting out a property that's uh, come vacant on a tenant turn demand was off the charts last week um, there's no other way to put it it was uh, incredible uh, we've had what is probably our busiest uh, ever week, single week, in terms of lets ever. So um, that would be people feeling like it got back to normal and just the normal people moving, plus a backlog coming through as well. Definitely, definitely some pent up demand. Um, we are still experiencing a higher than normal percentage of fall throughs, but we've refined the process to make it much more reliable. And I think last week's figure showed that, and I think this week's will will, um, will show that too. So there's a much higher volume of inquiries, and it's, it's our job now to whittle them down to a smaller number on the video viewings, the video viewing being the sort of more unusual thing. Um, and um, you know, it's, it's actually making our business more efficient, uh, which is a great thing to carry forward into the next year. You know, foreseeable future. I don't see why we'd uh, we'd stop the some of the processes that we run now. We'll always be doing a, a, a physical viewing or offering it, but some of the qualification processes uh, are very sensible in any market. So we'll be carrying those through. It was kind of a light bulb moment for us, seeing how things work, you know, necessity being the mother of invention and all that. So we're steadily reducing the backlog of properties that are empty. Um, we're expecting the numbers for May to approach pretty much a normal month, not quite, but nearly. Um, and if June trades like this, we actually might exceed normal June numbers. So that's great news for landlords with empty properties. Our focus of filling empty rooms, you know, avoid the void, uh, is definitely paying off there. That was the number one focus. Um, management then, so the ongoing uh, management of a tenancy. We've rented the property out, tenant moves in, and that is looking after the tenant, looking after the accounts, and looking after the property itself, those three things. Um, if you were to look at the email and call volume, like I do, I've got the numbers in front of us, um, yeah, we, can, we track all the emails that come in, uh, response times, all the um, emails and telephone number, telephone calls as well. You'd say we're back to normal. Uh, in fact, calls and, um, you know, from landlords and tenants were, were above normal. Like I say, there's that pent up demand. Um, landlords and tenants, they're gonna need to be patient to because that backlog does need dealing with. Um, there are probably, we, we're looking at it a week, maybe 10 days to clear that backlog. Um, just so you know, although we did furlough some uh, team members, we are 100% back in this regard. And in, in those, those departments, they're 100% back. So we're, we're not sort of choking off that at all. Um, team capacity is 100% now, and they're working overtime to get that through. So we're not just sitting back saying, well, like at Olympic, you've got to get through, you know, there's demand and uh, we're going to get through it. We're trying to race through that, but still, please be a little bit patient. We're going to be back to normal. We, we discussed in this uh, three, four, five, six updates ago, it was all about the, the work uh, silo. So stuff that we just couldn't do sitting there and we've got to get back through that work. We think that it's um, um, yeah, two weeks worth at the moment. Every single piece of maintenance that came in throughout the lockdown period has now been allocated. Um, that's a good point actually, because 
day-to-day -day operations are just taking longer, and that's my next point, really. So they, they might have been allocated, um, you know, but instructing the work is the easy bit. Um, getting the work done is harder. Quotes are taking hard to come back, uh, longer to come back. Um, work takes longer to do, and this, essentially there's more chasing to do, more backwards and forwards, updates um, to tenants, to landlords, between the contractors, between ourselves, for each non-normal situation, and there's plenty of non-normal situations. So every time there's a talking point, it just sort of slows things down a little bit. Um, but we're quickly returning to normal. We restarted fire alarm testing in HMOs last week. It, of course, it's a legal requirement to do that. Um, up until last week, just the week before, it was last week when we restarted it, the guidance was that um, these tests could wait. That made us really uncomfortable. Um, during a lockdown, there were a lot more people living in a shared house, a house of multiple occupation, HMO. Um, so we actually saw a greater risk, and to, to put a pause on those, we were really uncomfortable with that, so we wanted to restart it as quickly as we can. Um, so we have done. Um, we can't restart cleaning, unfortunately. Cleaning in HMO rooms, is not, none of the people we work with are back at work. Um, we're working on some new plans this week to get that started, because again, um, well, we need it. Um, actually, one of the main reasons was the, the cost of the fire testing that raised some eyebrows uh, with our landlords. Um, a fire test is a flat £25 um, for, for across the board, uh, and that's expensive to me. I look at it and I, I raise my eyebrows. Um, however, I've seen the competing quotes, it was the first question I asked, and some of them were up to £95 plus VAT per visit, you know, a specialist fire testing, you know, the person that would normally do do a whole test on a, a warehouse or a factory or an office um, those kind of people pick up the phone to a fire test and it's 95 pounds plus VAT per visit um, we don't need that level it's simply testing the fire system on a, on a, on a weekly by weekly basis um, none of the quotes we got were less than 50 quid so uh, having it 25 pounds we, we did a deal with a, a, a contractor that we use for other things and they're going to fit it around their other work to reduce the price that was actually a great price even though to me it, it looks a lot it does go to show how cost effective our normal solution is our normal solution is the uh, combined clean report and um, test all in one and for not much more i want to sort of I've got a bit of a stick for it for saying it was almost free cleaning because of course it's not free cleaning we, we pay for it but um yeah, it's very cost effective to combine all those three things in one. Don't forget we don't we, we don't charge more for HMO management versus single let, but there is that sort of communal um, um, charge there as well, which is cost effective and that, that goes to show it, I guess. Um, we're not working on getting that um, situation normal and back back to normal as soon as possible because I know that, that, that those increased costs can't continue. Um, but yeah, the legal tests, they're, they're, um, they're a legal obligation, so we've got to do this. You may also have noticed that it'll be mandatory to have a, an electrical condition report in a rented property. That's uh, fast approaching. We're preparing for that now. Don't worry, we will have that in hand. We won't, let, won't drop the ball there. Um, we will be able to meet that new requirement for you. Unfortunately, inspections are still on hold, and um, that is just sensible risk management uh, guidance industry-wide and uh, doing non-essential inspections is uh, is uh, it's just not, not not sensible to be doing it so they're still on hold and again in a work silo catch up later arrears um, holding steady as it has done throughout you know it was our number one focus at the beginning of all this um, by the middle of it you know um, a couple of weeks in we realized that it was going to be something that we we could just keep steady and we have done then our focus switched to, to fill in the empty rooms and we've achieved that so uh, arrears holding steady there are you know a dozen now cases all listed down where um, there are arrears building up uh, but they're managed, you know, it's 20% off every uh, month until this ends and then they'll catch up in a in a, an orderly way. Um, there was quite a few things in the news last week about you know, tenants demanding, um, or tenant groups, not tenants, tenant groups demanding you know, certain concessions. Um, we looked at it, we actually said it was rather insulting to our tenants, um, sort of putting them in this group of set, second class citizens who need help. Clearly, they don't. You know, why would somebody just because they rent a house as opposed to own the house uh, be any in any more or less financial trouble than um, th th than anybody else? They are 
yeah, managing their money very well and in they are communicating well and we're, uh, we've got a, a situation which is there's clearly some sensible people on the other side of the situation. We're talking to tenants who uh, have it under control just as much as we do. So to suggest otherwise, and to say that they'd need a, some kind of break or whatever, one, they don't, and to suggest it, it's quite insulting to tenants, really, if the tenants wanted to think of it that way. Um, taking on new landlords. Um, it's been hard to take on a new landlord. We've taken on two or three during the lockdown, but they had empty properties. Um, switching a portfolio, it's just hard in, the, in this, in this um, uh, situation. You know, organising all the keys and the viewings and liaising with old uh, letting agencies to bring paperwork over. It was um, just hard, meeting tenants, it's just hard. Um, it's coming back now. We've got several switches booked in for next month. Um, and the team can now take those kind of inquiries, which is great news. A bit more like uh, business as usual. So, in summary, we're hoping that the flow of buy-to-let property to invest in starts now. Landlords are queuing up to buy those. Uh, renovations are hopefully, hopefully getting back to normal this week and we'll know more, get a better steer on that by the end of this week. Um, there's massive demand from tenants and it's allowing us to rent almost everything that's available as normal and clear the backlog, which is great news. Maintenance and arrears under control. Looks a bit different, but it's totally under control. Um, so you'd think we're back to normal, um, but don't forget that we, we really aren't. You know, every day you know, we're, we're the, I'm in the office now. I'm the only one here, and uh, there's only one person in the office. Everybody's working from home. We have no immediate plans to reopen the office. When we do, it's highly likely that we're we'll working with the shutters down and having no viewings, um, visitors. Sorry. Um, there's lots and lots of things that crop up every day that rem remind us that uh, it's not 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 normal. You know, there's lots of things that are sat you know sat at home at, around your kitchen table and taking a phone call. It's become the norm, um, and then you sort of look and think this isn't normal, and uh, we don't want it to go on for much longer than um, than now. We don't want a lot of this to be the, uh, the the new normal. We want to get back to work and feel like we're. We're, uh, we're moving forward rather than just treading water, which is what the last uh, sort of couple of months has felt like. Um, I think most of those things are in, well, I think, I know, almost all of those things are in others' control. You know, we need um, the external people to um, you know, get up to speed and um, tell us that they're ready to get back to normal because we are certainly ready to get back to normal. So that's it. Have a great week and uh, tune in for next week's update. Bye for now.